Blue Lock, Chapter 248, Final Fight. We see a shot from above of the Blue Lock facility as the announcer shows his gratitude to every Blue Lock fan tuning in worldwide. He tells them to get ready as the moment we've all been waiting for is upon us, which is the climax of the Neo-Egoist League. The entire footballing world waits as the audience tunes in to the final matches of the Neo-Egoist League. Will we see the moment? The moment a legend is born? Tonight's matches are FC Barcha versus Manshine City and the Battle of the undefeated, which is Bastard Munchen versus PXG. We see a lot of familiar faces tuning in like Isagi, their parents, and Chigiri's sister, I think. Maybe that the other one is Tokamitsu's brother and we see some more people tuning in that I don't know about. One thing that sticks out to me, though, is the fact that people are drinking at a bar with the game on the big screen, who will emerge as the neo-egoist champion as the seconds tick down to the kickoff. We go to FIFA's conference room now as we see Buratsuda having a sinister smile on his face as he shows the tablet, which has growing numbers. Numbers. He asks them what they think about the ratings because they are off the charts. Blue Lock Television now has over 100 million subscribers worldwide, which is insane. It is one of the biggest and hottest sports entertainment platforms on the planet. The entire football world is tuning in to witness the emergence of its newest superstar. He tells the people that they must take full advantage of the immense popularity wave that Blue Lock Television has generated. That's why, regarding the upcoming U-20 World Cup, Hirotoshi Buratsuda humbly asks them to consider his ideas. We see the FIFA president now as Buratsuda begs him to take his idea into consideration. He tells him that he'll consider it if it increases their revenue. We are in the Blue Lock medical check room now as we see a lot of stats on display, as well as ratings, it seems, and some other graphics and numbers. Cardiopulmonary function, muscle mass, overall fitness. Henri says that his numbers are slowly but surely reaching Noel Noah's numbers, and I'm pretty sure that she's talking about Kunigami here. She proceeds to say that achieving these numbers at his age is a astounding. But why is there some weird cubicle thing with wires like they've got in the Matrix movie that scares the freak out of me? Jinpachi Ego tells her to not forget that it's a test subject since he is the man who came out of the wild card. He was designed to raise the level of the rest of the unpolished gems in his quest to create the world's best. Now I get that, but Kunigami hasn't been able to accomplish that so far even though his stats should be reflecting his competence as a player. We see Kunigami wired up now as Jinpachi tells tells Kunigami to throw away his ego and achieve a blank state of mind. Doesn't this literally mean that he should be an NPC, though, as Kunigami agrees? If you're enjoying this video so far, consider subscribing. We are in the Germany Stratum's locker room now as they'll go with the 442 formation like usual. We've got Kaiser and Kunigami up front. I get Kaiser, but I think putting Kunigami in the front wouldn't be that smart because of his performance in the previous match against the Ubers team. But it might just be that Jinpachi went up to Noel Noah to give him a piece of his mind about why this match would be different. This also means that he will be in the same position as Shidu, since I'm assuming that he's going to be a center forward as well, together with Itoshi Rin. I really hope we get some backstory about Kunigami here. On right wing, we've got Isagi. I hope that he'd play in the center forward position instead of Kunigami, since he definitely was the most valuable player in their match against Ubers, and Isagi told the interviewer that he wants to make it as a striker. Hence why I find this decision a bit strange, but Isagi Isagi would actually be a very competent midfielder because of his vision and playmaking skills. Grimm is on the left wing, no surprises there. Ness is a center attacking midfielder, of course, since he's going to assert Kaiser and help him with his goals and help him to completely demolish Isagi Yoichi. Reichi is a center defensive midfielder, just like the last game as well. He did pretty well there, considering that he literally gave Snuffy a hard time with his grit and stamina. The protractor mode was quite a success, but there just were some variables that Isagi didn't anticipate. He Iori is in the right-back spot. To be honest, I would much rather have him in a center attacking midfielder than Ness, since Asagi as Hiori carried Bastard Munchen towards victory. But this is fine, since he's on the same lane as Asagi, although I don't think that he can fully shine in that position. On the right-back spot, we have Kiora Jin. Honestly, we know so little about the guy, but I'm excited to see what he is made of. And then, we of course have Birkenstock and Mensa on the center-back spots. Makes a lot of sense that they're both from Bastard Munchen, since Blue Lock is made out of strikers. And Goat Maru is on goal, of course. Noel Noah proceeds to tell them that he plans on aggressively substituting players, depending on the situation, though. He's going to be way more conscious of his decisions than ever before, as he should. He wants to see the full extent of this team's ability, so he asks those on the bench to be ready to fight at a moment's notice, as he urges them to not miss their opportunity. Noel Noah asks them to go out and win now, as he won't accept any less. We see the bastard Munchen guys walking up towards the pitch, as Igaguri 
Gagamaru gets hyped as he agrees with no, even though he isn't playing. Gagamaru and Reichi are getting hyped now as well. Winning is going to be the only thing that matters here as he looks back to his early days in the Neo Egoist League, where he provided assists and even used himself as a decoy. Bit by bit, he overcame the obstacles standing in his way, and as he fought, he evolved and gained new weapons. Maybe that's why the current Isagi can think about becoming the world's best striker. Becoming the best player in the world was always a vague and obscure desire, but now he can already visualize the way he wants to play as a striker as we see a puzzle piece with the lefty shot. Talking about the lefty shot, I'm sad that Kaneshiro has kept out Isagi's training since he probably wants to save it for the match. I wonder if it genuinely is that easy for Kaiser to take him down since Isagi has trained a lot. We see more puzzle pieces now like Metavision from the third selection, Egocentricism from his match against Manshine City, number one from the mindset he gained throughout his time in the bastard Munchen Stratum, which also is his originality and flow like he's realized in the U-20 arc. These are the ways he will defeat Rin and carry bastard Munchen to victory. But will it really be that easy facing against an evolved Rin and a hungry Shidu? The image of becoming the best player in the world, this is Isagi Yoichi's originality indeed as this is the only thing that he desires. This is Isagi Yoichi's hunger. We get to the field now as the PXG players are ready for battle. Their formation is a 3-4-1-2 with Shidu Ryusei and Itoshi Rin as center forwards, which shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. Although I wonder how those two will actually play with each other without fighting as gruesomely as we've seen in the third selection. Zenetsu is right wing and can assert himself pretty well there through his sprints. Charles Chevalier is a center attacking midfielder as he has been the key to Shidu and Rin their goals. Nanasi is left wing. I wonder what he's going to bring to the table. Karasu Tabito is a center midfielder together with Tokimitsu. Tokimitsu is obviously there because of his raw strength and Karasu is there because of his observational skills and tenacity on the ball. Michelin is right back. Gabon is the center back and Chapa is left back. I wonder how big of a role he will play in this match since a lot of people within the Blue Lock community speculated that he is a next-gen 11 and Renoir is on goal. Shidu Ryusei says hi to the Blue Rose Emperor Michael Kaiser as he wonders if the whole world will know his name if he beats him. Kaiser tells him to get lost as he calls him a vulgar pink-haired philistine. Shido reckoned that this is going to be a lot of fun. Isagi walks up to Itoshi Rin and tells him to put the title of number one on the line to see who's the strongest out of them once and for all. Itoshi Rin doesn't give a crap about that though as there is a different thing that he desires the most. And that thing is the moment he destroys him as they bang heads ready to take each other on. Karasu asks them to wrap it up as the show is about to start. Nanais reckons that this is all or nothing as he's about to put his life on the line here. Raichi wants to win, destroy, and survive, as Gagamaru calls them champions. We see a shot of Kunigami and the ball now as Isagi reckons that it's his challenge and goal. He will surpass Itoshi Rin in this match as Game 10 of the Neo Egoist League officially started. Winning is the only thing that matters as the Neo Egoist League title is on the line. Sparks fly as the two teams glare at each other across their respective halves. Bastard Munchen versus PXG, the Munch anticipated title match kicks off. To be continued in Chapter 249, The Beginning. Watch this video next where I explain why Bastard Munchen versus PXG will be peak.